Okay, we're here with the uh, SC Nanaki semifinals, Kamikaze versus Vid, 10 years later. Uh, yeah, this will be released in 2023. This game was played sometime in 2013, July 2013. No? Nope. It's played it sometime in 2013. I have no idea when. I am recording this in July 2023. And we have a game between Vid and Kamikaze. I have two screenshots. I'm only going to show you the first screenshot right now. The second screenshot is five moves in. That means we know the starting position, and we know the position five moves in, and we have cleverly deduced what moves must have been made in between. There's a couple different move orders that are technically possible. I think like five or six move orders that legally reach the position reached after five moves, but I think it is very clear which one was played. And there are two ones that are a little more plausible than others, but one of them makes a lot more sense because the moves to get there are just a lot less strange. So let's let's take a look. We're going to switch over to the solver. I'll show the other screenshot later, and we'll take a look at the game. I, I don't know how much I'll have to say about it. I haven't really looked at it before, uh, except to try to figure out move orders and what seemed plausible. But Vid started... Oh no. Huge problem. I've given the wrong hands to the wrong colors, because on this program, red always goes first, and I gave the red player second. Uh, I gave the hands to the wrong players. So we're going to reopen this. Give me one moment. Hopefully it'll all work okay. I am so good at making videos. Just an incredible talent over here. Do you want to open? Come on, buddy. There you go. Has it corrected? It has corrected. All right. Vid starts in one. Now, there are two move orders, uh, main move orders, that could have reached the position we're trying to solve for, but this one makes a lot more sense. Vid said, first of all, in his simple mind, 6-7-5-7 uh, seven, seven is going to be a much better card going up than going down, so the other possible starter we could have is this. But uh, this makes more sense with how Vid tends to play, and also it means uh, Kamikaze's reply makes a lot more sense. Now, if we look at this starter... Kamikaze can take it, but Vid can always take back, and Kazi would have to use his 9-9 or his 7-6-8-4 to be able to take it. Now, if he did use the 7-6-8-4, he kind of forces this response. Can he do anything fun here? Well, he doesn't really have a good way to capture and be safe in 3, so that's not too appealing. If he captures in 2, we're just exploring out here. There are a whole bunch of ways to capture back. Hard to imagine Vid doesn't have a solid recapture here. And his cards are pretty well organized to face the action. So capturing is not super appealing. Instead, Kamikaze decided to uh, set up a card in two so he'd have a better capture there because that's his less comfortable capture. But this does come with a cost because as we saw, this was Kazi's best way to fight for four, right? And now he doesn't have near as smooth a card in four he has a bunch of cards that do work there, 9529, 8647, but not as smoothly. I'm always a big downer on moves in 5 these days, so I'd probably have looked for something else. Um, move that looks visually appealing to me is here, because you set up 2 for yourself, but it is not shared. I guess it is shared, 2599 has both squares, but 2599 will never have 2, or both captures, will never have 2 and any of the paired squares like 4 or 6. So it's not as dangerous a card to give up there. And I feel like this is a pretty reasonable move, just eyeballing it. There might be something big there. Anyway, Kazi goes in five, and Vid takes the opportunity to have big setups for himself in nine. And again, this game could have happened nine five one or one five nine, but if we look at it the other move order where Vid starts here, I don't know why Kazi would have gone in five here setting up 6757 seven, seven to have both 6 and 8. So I think, like, pretty clearly this is the move order we got. And now it's a very dangerous position for Kamikaze, because the 6 and 8 pairing is really devastating, so you sort of want to get rid of the squares there, but it's not at all obvious how you want to do so. If you want to get in a capture, well, being weak to 5, when there's a bunch of still combo potential through 5, uh, one extra combo is this one, is one you've conceded. So there's a lot of ways to combo through five. Feels very dangerous. And if you don't want to capture, the problem is not only do you never capture, but you also just give up safety. 
I think the solver actually said this move in six is one of the ties. In fact, there is a win here for Kamikaze, which is pretty surprising. Ah, uh, he combos through an eight. Right, because Kazi has eight as well. And surprisingly, this is winning. That card is safe in eight. But, and this move, I think, in six is one of the holds. But this is very hard to find. This is a very difficult position in practice. And from Vid's recollections of the game, Kazi was already quite frustrated with his move in five and maybe wasn't in the best state to find defenses. Uh, this is one of four moves that tie. You might think four ties is a lot, but there's 24 moves available, and they're in a whole variety of squares. I think this is, in practice, a really hard position to save. Let's, uh, let's see what the ties are. This to seven. I guess that creates some difficulty in they can't take the nine facing out, but... And I guess this doesn't create a similar nine facing out that can't be taken. This can be taken... This 9 can be taken by 9835. So this is the only way to use one of the corners and create something challenging. So it does make sense, right? We can come up with a reason, but it's a it's a very it's not an easy move to play. And actually, wait, do you have the recapture? Yes, you do. 8647 and 8. Okay, I'm not foolish. Um, another tie is here. Again, Really hard move to calculate out. Concedes a whole lot of options to your opponent. I guess this is covered with 5776. So you're not immediately giving up a ton of safety. But you have to see as a follow-up the exact tie here that this ties here. You know, you can see this path, but it's it's not easy. What's the other ties? Uh, there's... This in three, I would never find that. And there's this and six. Yeah, those are the four ties. One, two, three, four. Very difficult position to save. Just one of those games where, in practice, this is incredibly likely to be a win for vid, even if the solver says there are four ties. Now, compared to something like, just to give an example, say something like this. Say the solver said there were four ties, but it was like, like, I don't know, go here, go here, go here, and something else. You'd be like, but those are the three moves I'm looking at, right? So, like, there were only four out of 24 moves that tie, but, like, those were the four moves I considered, right? So any move I was actually going to play is a tie. And so it can be really misleading how many ties there are. And I think in this kind of position, when there are four ties, unless one of them is like immediately safe, it is very hard to find them in practice. And no moves are immediately safe, which just says in practice, there are very few things that tie and none of them are obvious at all. This is incredibly likely to be a winning position for Vid. Kazi goes in two. And... This feels like it can't be right, because 2 is the only square where Kazi has more combo play than Vid does, and I just think you can't get rid of that kind of square in these positions. Now again, we have the position after 5 moves. It's possible I got the move order wrong, but the ways I could have gotten the move order wrong still have to reach the same position, and that means we have to see something really peculiar like this being the move order, and I think that's just much less likely than the move order we've seen. Now, sometimes people, you know, make bad moves. I have a ton of respect for Kazi's play. Uh, I've played him twice in tournaments, and I have lost both games. You know, Delhi has a really good record versus Kamikaze. I have a really poor record versus Kamikaze. And that includes at what I consider my absolute peak, which was around SE Squall in 2010, where I made the finals and lost to Kamikaze, again, at I think about the best I was ever playing. Uh, 2009 was my best actual year. I think I was playing better in 2010, just happened to have some bad games in tournaments. It happens. But uh, 2010, Squall was supposed to be my best run. Kazi beat me there. We're showing a game where I think Kazi played really poorly, but that is not to say he was a really poor player. I think, you know, sometimes just the cards or the rule set do not click, and it is very tough to play well in those games. And the best players ever are generally the players like Deli All, where 
regardless of rule set, their intuition finds creative ideas, or Yojimbo, who's just going to so obviously put in the work on any rule set that they're all going to end up clicking well enough to play at a really, really high level. So, I, and I, I should mention Seto in that group, but I don't understand how Seto plays as well as he does. He, he just plays really well. I don't have a sense for how it works. And so I can't really talk about him in the same way I can talk about the others, because I have a lot less understanding of what makes him tick as such a powerful player. Again, this is not to be negative about anyone. Uh, Seto is just doing things outside of the range of my imagination, which admittedly the others are to some extent as well, but I have more experience with them doing it, so I'm a little more used to it. So Kazi plays a bad game here, and that happens. Now, this is all to, so to say, Vid also plays a bad game here. And in this position, there are six winning moves, which is an extraordinarily high number out of 15. And Vid somehow picks a move that does not win here. So what are some wins? Well, we could say the idea is to keep six and eight open. So the natural square to go in is four, locking in a card and leaving six and eight open for six, seven, five, seven to sweep. We could say that uh, 2, 5, 9, 9, and 3 also leaves those squares open and is safe, almost. But if it's comboed, that flips 5, which means you have further combos in response, right? Um, so 2, 5, 9, 9, and 3 is quite appealing. I think going in 8, is pretty appealing because you're likely to kind of have 2599 dominating the right side of the board and either of your cards might dominate the left side of the board. So you could very clearly see ideas in eight. I think honestly what the case is here is everything looks really tempting and if there are like five tempting moves and three of them win and two tie, maybe sometimes you end up on the tie because you just don't have enough time to check everything. So our six wins, we'll just go through them, mostly to be rude to Vid here, is uh, this apparently wins, just going for the Z and having two really nice sweepers. You know, I, I think probably this is the most testing move, where there's only one winning shot, but... Ah. Uh, you can go here. Yeah. Six seven five seven 5, 7 takes enough either way. They don't have the double capture. So yeah, uh, that's win number 1. What's win number 2? Win number 2 is here. Just taking this combo. 3 is kind of a dead square for Kazi. Sure. Uh, win number 3 is here. Just not even quite safety. Right. But I guess you have the combos back. Is this the idea? Yeah, that is the idea. All right. Uh, you see, these are kind of tricky. There's some stuff to figure out here. Um, what's win number four? Win number four is here. This one does work. Win number five is here. That's an odd one, because you think you have to hold that card for six and eight. Very odd. And win number four is just taking the combo in eight. Again, six is kind of a dead square for Kazi. Um, now you do walk into potential combos, but you're fine. Probably they should move order that differently, like start, eh, no, I don't see a way to do it, but start in four or seven. So anyways, those are the six wins. Vid goes for this, which you can see is our second screenshotted position. We'll flip over to that. Oops, uh, where are you at? This is our second screenshotted position, so we know this position was reached, and I do think this is by far the most logical move order. There are other sequences where, like, Kazi goes in two before five, but I think that makes a lot less sense. There are sequences where Vid starts in nine rather than one, but I think that makes less sense. I'm 86% sure this is the correct move order. And we reach this position, and here we have a mystery. So the question is, did they, who, what happened when they reached this position? Because it turns out Vid has missed a win here. 
right? There were six wins. He did not play any of the wins. There is a way to tie here. The question is, is this the game Vid won? Did Kamikaze miss the tie here? Which would be very easy to understand because when everything has gone wrong for you, and if you look at this position, it looks super duper lost. You have no combo play anywhere. You are way behind. And the other person has pretty decent sweepers, even if they're missing some down power. So I, I think it's quite understandable to not be able to find anything here, right? You have one capture in three. You have one capture in two captures in six, each of a different card. And one of them uses the card you need for three. You have uh, a double capture in eight, but that's also the only card that has a capture in three. Your 5766 six, six can't do anything. Just a really unpleasant position to play. And if you don't see the drawing idea, and maybe you just don't look that hard. So a tie was possibly missed here. My guess is this was the decisive game and Kazi missed the tie here. Vid thinks it's also possible that Kazi found the tie here, but blew a different game that looked similar. And we know it was similar because we know Kazi was frustrated after the final game with a bad reply to a starter going in five. Now it's possible this happened, and then Kazi again played another start re reply to five that was also not strong. But I think that's a pretty unlikely version of events. So I think we can fairly confidently say Kazi did not find the tie here, uh, and Vid went on to win this game. Which, honestly, not a great game. Like, clearly not Kazi's best work or particularly good work, and not Vid's best work either. On the other hand, if you've seen a previous video of mine, we have the Nanaki Finals. We were able to recreate Vid's win over Nightwish, and I think that is a fantastic win where the start is nine is taken from eight, and then Vid plays in two, setting up combos everywhere. And after Nightwish plays in one, taking safety, Vid plays in six, setting up even more combo potential. And it's just one of those really beautiful games where someone like isn't locking in cards, they're just giving themselves more combos, and it's all correct and setting up future stuff. So this is not to say Vid didn't deserve to win the tournament, I think he played awesome in the finals, but this other game we have records of, not so great. Uh, to, uh, to skip away, to skip to our result, Kazi should have played, and may have played, but I bet he did not, uh, 9, 5, 2, 9, and 8, which is safe, and due to Vid's lacking down power, Vid cannot play in 7, because if he goes in 7, Kazi can block 6 for the tie. Kazi, uh, Vid can take the combo in six, but notice, because it flips five, it flips eight, and because it flips eight, sorry, it, no, not because it flips five, because it flips nine, it flips eight, and because it flips eight, there is now a combo back where five, seven, six, six flips eight, which flips five, which flips two, and uh, six, which is just enough to hold the tie. So 9529 like pops out at you, right? As like, this is the only way to take stuff and be safe. But it does look pretty bad after this, and you have to realize exactly how the combo chain works, which is, I think, a little tricky. So again, especially if you're feeling really bad about how the rest of the game is gone, you probably don't find a way to save it at this point. And I think it is very likely that this is Nightwish's semifinal win. I'm pretty confident we have the move order right, and we have the... Uh, you know, we don't have the exact last four moves of the game, but the last four moves of the game don't specifically matter unless the tie is found, and I suspect it was not. So, there you have it. That is a uh, Vid versus Kamikaze, the semifinals of Nanaki, I believe in 2013, maybe 2012? I think 2013. And uh, this has been the uh, third of our recent recreations uh, following up, I did Vid vs. Nightwish a while ago, which I think is an excellent game, very deserving of a finals win, really high-class uh, way to end it. Then we have uh, this one, Vid vs. Kamikaze, the semifinals of the same tournament. We have Myself vs. Yojimbo and Sid round three, and we have... what's the other one? I just did it. God, my brain's going. Uh...
oh, yeah, Doom Train beating Koner. Right. And uh, I shouldn't spoil the results in case you haven't watched, but in Triad Wars 10, pretty sure that was a Doom Train's win over Koner. And a nice win, very precise. Uh, spotted the flaws of his opponent's moves very well and took advantage of them nicely. And that's the game I'm most confident we've successfully recreated all nine moves of correctly. So, you know, check the other ones out. It's nice. Uh, big thanks to CoolSpot for sending me these screenshots of past positions where we can piece together a little of what happened and uh, see these interesting games.